homework time. Yes. Happy, happy homework time is here again. Lesson three of module four, geometry. All right, let's start by jotting our name down at the top of our papers. I will write my name and you, meanwhile, write yours. And let's also take a moment to write today's date. I will write today, you write the actual date, where and when you are in this world of ours. And our instructions for number one, with all these pretty pictures, it's like kindergarten again. On each object, trace at least one pair of lines that appear to be perpendicular. And so perpendicular lines simply meet at right angles. They intersect at a 90 degree angle. So it could look like that, those two lines are perpendicular, or any doesn't matter if they're turned at some kind of angle there. They're meeting at right angles, or at least appear to be. Or they could actually cross. So intersect simply means to meet. A uh, common question, I, I guess, well, are these perpendicular? Because it doesn't actually go through the other line. Yes, they are perpendicular. In fact, even like this, those lines, if I say so, they are perpendicular. They meet at right angles. So when we look at this table, and I'm going to indulge myself in the luxury of switching colors, um, so I'm not writing black on black, there are many lines that are perpendicular. And one thing that's interesting, at least to me, about this is that um, lines that ought, we know to be perpendicular because it's drawn in perspective, uh, actually appear differently. So now your teacher might feel differently, but this angle here, the way it's drawn, it's drawn as an obtuse angle. But in reality, we know that a tabletop, the corners, most likely they meet at right angles. But I don't want to get you in trouble. So I would argue that those indeed are perpendicular. But look, here, I'm going to trace this one right here. So right there, I'm going to say, okay, this is perpendicular. Those lines that corner, they meet at right angles. Or maybe even this little one right here, um, that those meet at right angles. Um, although, again, I'd argue that all, every single angle on this table, I don't see an exception, that they all meet at right angles. They're all perpendicular. It's just as drawn in perspective like that. And the stop sign, this is interesting because your initial inclination might be to go with the angles of the octagon. But of course, those definitely are not perpendicular. So the, this is kind of a test right here to say, do you get it? Um, do you understand that these angles, these are all obtuse, right? All the angles of the octagon. But of course, here, look, the angles in the T, right there. I'm gonna trace these lines, those are perpendicular. Here on the P, this corner here, and of course the lower corner. I know it only says to do one, but you know, I'm showing you, hey, there's a bunch. Computer's pretty easy, right? All right, let's go with the screen. That's the obvious one. Hey, look, these lines are perpendicular. They meet at right angles. Bookshelf, even simpler. Any of the corners of these shelves, any of these sh shelf corners, all meet at perpendicular angles. Both the, uh, or sorry, not perpendicular angles, but at right angles, the lines are perpendicular. The house as well, we see like, okay, well, the roof line, that's obtuse. We're not dealing with circles and poofy clouds, but hey, this doorway, that's perpendicular right there. Ooh, not doing a great job tracing, so sorry. And these would be here if they weren't obscured by the bushes. I mean, these lines are still perpendicular. We just can't see it, so we'll leave that one alone. But hey, I could go with this one. That's perpendicular. All the bars on the xylophone. All these bars, all the corners of all these bars, whether it's the lower left corner or the upper right corner of another bar, all these bars are perpendicular. Obviously, these lines that support the xylophone bars, no. The crossed mallets, no. This uh, skyscraper here, no. Definitely not perpendicular lines, but here, yes, definitely. Right there, that one we're looking at a big old perpendicular and then there are the little ones, like here, and here. There are a whole bunch here. These perpendicular. Lots of them in the skyline. Okay, so there we go. We did way more than we really needed to. Let's go to number two.
All right, and now here we are in numbers two and three. Two asking us, how do you know if two lines are perpendicular? Well, one reason can be as if your mama says so. No, actually, truly, if, if it's a mathematical given, if, if I draw two lines as sloppy as they might be and I say those are perpendicular, then that is a geometric given. And it's true. It's true. They're, they're perpendicular if I say so. But really, they're asking us here, what's the definition of perpendicular? Okay, so let's answer in a complete sentence here. So two lines... R, and look at the spelling of this word. Might as well learn to spell these. Learn the vocabulary for real. Per you lar. We say perpendicular, er, but I'm saying lar, so you remember the spelling. That's an A-R, like dollar and seller and collar. Perpendicular, if what? Well, we've talked about it. They need to meet at right angles, although for me, we could use the more mathematical terminology, intersect. If they intersect at what? Right, at right angles. It's that simple. That's all that's to it. That's the, this entire lesson is on this one word, this one definition right there. Boom. If you got that, you got lesson three. So now we're going to use these segments here to draw a, a segment that is perpendicular. Use a straight edge, which could be a ruler or just about anything. Now this is a little tricky here. You got to, you know, look at it quite, you got to look at it, right? Um, so I could draw it anywhere along here. I could start at this end. I could start at this end. I could start in the middle, wherever I want. I'm going to start in the middle because, hey, I just feel like it. As long as it's intersecting at right angles. See, so I could see if I go over here, no, 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 uh, hey, look, if I connect at that point, boom, there we go. All right, and now with this one, uh, I'm going to do something different just for laughs. Uh, I'm going to go from this end. See, I just have to draw a segment that's perpendicular. It doesn't have to intersect in the center of the line, which is the point I'm trying to get across here. All right. Is that do it there? No, that's not quite it. Hmm. That's it. There we go. See, so that's... Is that roughly perpendicular? Can I grab that and move it? Yep. that good? All right. <laughs> it's going to have to be. All right. Now in this one, in a triangular grid, I'm going to go ahead and draw another perpendicular line here. I'm going to start this one just kind of like at this juncture of the line. Oh, I need my, uh, my line tool again. There we go. All right. And this is easy because, right, hey, and I can make it any length too. I'm just going straight through all the intersections of the grid here. And I'll bring it out to this point. So one line could be longer or shorter, it doesn't matter, as long as it's uh, perpendicular. And now this one, I'm going to actually have it go, go flowing right through and go straight down here. Again, not at any particular point on the line. I want you to understand there's a common misconception that the lines have to look like a T, and they don't. They just need to intersect at right angles. So you see, I, all, each of these three, I drew diff, uh, four rather, I drew differently and yet they are all perpendicular lines. So there's not just one certain way. You'll find this when we get to shapes and we look at trapezoids. There's that traditional trapezoid, and then there's, well, anything that fits the definition of a trapezoid, although it might look quite different. Rolling on. Move it. All right, and in number four here, we're going to use the right angle template that you created in class. And as we said in the last lesson, that was the circle that you folded up and created a cross in the middle, and that gave you right angles. If you don't have that with you, that's fine. You could even make another one or just fold a, any size and shape piece of paper. If you fold in half twice, you're going to end up with uh, right angles. Or you could just use the corner of a book or something. Um, I'm actually just going to be using my brain because it's pretty easy to tell looking at these figures to say what looks like a right angle. Um, the, none of these figures, like there are no 
89 degree angles here. They're either right angles or they isn't. So uh, we're going to be looking for right angles. Mark each right angle with a small square. For each right angle you find, name the corresponding pair of perpendicular sides. And if you look at 4A here, look, it's showing it. And now it's one little tricky thing. Don't miss here. Mark each right angle with a small square. So they've done one for us and written it out. But we could tell looking at this rectangle, yes, that there are four right angles. We don't have to pretend we're not as bright as we are. We can see there's four right angles there. Uh, we don't even really need the right angle template, although you should go ahead and use yours. Um, so they've said, look, line segment CA, there it is, line segment CA, this symbol means is perpendicular to, is perpendicular to line segment AB. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to grab my square making tool here and say, okay, now this corner, perpendicular lines, meet a right angle, this is perpendicular lines, this perpendicular lines, right? All four angles, all four corners, all four vertices of this rectangle. Okay, so the first one I did here, it's line segment AB. AB, line segment, is perpendicular to, that's what that symbol means, and then it's perpendicular to line segment BD. Line segment BD. And then line segment BD is in turn perpendicular to line segment CD. So BD is perpendicular to line segment CD. Do you see that? I sure hope so. And then CD, in turn, is perpendicular to, yes, AC. So line segment CD is perpendicular to line segment AC. Now, this is the aforementioned trapezoid. If you look at these four corners, these four vertices here, these four angles. There are no right angles there, okay? And so rather than just read, leave this blank, I'm going to write no right angles, which I encourage you to do as well so your teacher doesn't think, well, maybe you just skipped it. No right angles, exclamation point. Um, and let's look at C with this triangle. This is an isosceles triangle, right? We can surmise because it has a right angle here and it has two equal sides or at least they sure look equal um, so let me draw my little square in the corner whoa that's not it what happened there goodness let me try that again all right whoa that's better boom there we go and now so that's where line segment D-O meets line segment G-O. Ha, <laughs> dog. See, do go. That's what you say to your dog, do go. So line segment D-O is perpendicular to line segment G-O. And of course, I could call them by their opposite. I could say O-D and O-G, same thing. Now here, what do we have? We have an oval. Any right angles? No. So no right angles. No right angles. All right, so let's look at the rest of number four now. All right, and we have quite a variety here in E through H. Let's look first. We have another isosceles triangle where we have what appear to be two equal sides. Uh, but this one has an acute angle here, an acute angle here, acute angle here. So it's an acute isosceles triangle. Awfully cute, isn't it? Um, but no right angles. And so that is what we will simply write here. No right angles. Now, when we look at uh, F, this one is a little test of your ability. We have another rectangle, but you see it's drawn sort of tilted here. It doesn't matter. You can rotate a figure however you like and it's not changing the properties of the figure itself um, so 
it's a rectangle. We are looking at four right angles. Oh no, this isn't going to work this time using this tool. Hold on. <laughs> I should have realized that. So I'm just going to draw them, but let me uh, change colors here so you can actually see what I'm drawing. And I'm going to have to try to be as careful as possible. Oh, there's one right angle right there. Here's another one. And this here is a right angle, right? Right, right, right angle. And this is a right angle. It does not matter that the figure is rotated. Okay, we'll change back to black. All right, I'm back in black. And so what are our four angles? We're going to go kind of quickly through here. So we have this line segment, ON, is perpendicular to NM. So we'll write that down. Line segment ON is perpendicular to line segment NM. ON is also perpendicular to OP, correct? So line segment ON, again, is perpendicular to line segment OP. Now let's look at the bottom here. We have PM, right? So line segment PM is also perpendicular to the other two sides, OP. And then line segment PM again is perpendicular to the other side, MN. And you notice I kind of went systematically through this by using the top line and the bottom line here as reference points. I did ON, ON, and then PM, PM. Just to keep head straight there. All right, now when we look at this figure, well, it has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Yes, it's that figure. So, um, but look at the angles. Obtuse, 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 obtuse. They're all obtuse. We have no right angles here, so we're going to write no right angles. And lastly, in H with this cute little arrow, we notice the, the angles of the arrow itself right here. Notice this is a cute. This is a little hard to tell, isn't it? This one you're probably going to have to get out your, your right angle uh, doohickey, um, but that does look like a right angle, does it not? Yes, and then we have another acute. Now we do have the uh, interior angles here. Those are right angles as well, as well as these interior angles here. So we actually have quite a, quite a few angles to mark up here. Let me go again to my pretty purple. So this is the tricky one right here. This is the one that you might have missed. That's a right angle right there. This is a right angle. Can you see it? This here is a right angle. This is a right angle. And this is a right angle. Do you see any more? I hope not. Otherwise, you're seeing things. All right. So now I'm going to write them out. So here I have the intersection. Well, notice that these points, they might not have wanted us to do these exterior angles because this point here is not labeled. It's not given a, a name. So I'm going to do a step better than Eureka Math. Huh. And I'm going to call this one, uh, just to continue backwards alphabetically, this S and this T, because it did not say that they had to be interior angles. Did it? I don't think I, may, I saw that. So now this is line segment US is perpendicular to line segment SZ. I'm going to do these two first, because if you do not have these on your homework, I think your teacher's going to be fine with that, um, because these points were not labeled. It doesn't seem like they're looking for it. Oh, this one is labeled. I take it back. So uh, I do not need to label this T. I'm just going to cross that out. Oh, well, all right. I'll be neat about it and get my little eraser. There we go. Beautiful. And it left a smudge mark, just like in real life. Um, so this one's labeled X. I wonder why then they didn't uh, label the other one. Strange, very strange. So WX then, line segment WX, 
is perpendicular to xy, line segment xy. And then we have these interior angles here, the ones inside the figure. Um, so SZ is perpendicular to ZY. So line segment SZ is perpendicular to here, ZY, line segment ZY. And then lastly, this corner here, so it's XY with YZ. So line segment XY is perpendicular to line segment YZ. YZ? I don't know. So we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Oh, what did we miss? We did, oh, we didn't do the, the tricky one, <laughs> the UV and VW. So I'm going to write that up here where I have more room. So line segment UV. You see how important is to go back and check yourself? If the day ever comes that I stop missing stuff, you know, and I become perfect, you know, I'll let you know. UV, line segment UV is perpendicular to VW. Volkswagen. There we go. All right, good fun there, uh, but there's more yet to do. Let's go on to number five. Number five actually is uh, not really a problem. It's more of the same here. So uh, we're just simply going to identify, uh, using a right angle template as a guide, mark each right angle in the following figure with a small square, and note that a right angle does not have to be inside the figure. We were talking about that in the last one, with, again, with an arrow. Um, I think it could be exterior angles. How many pairs of perpendicular sides does this figure have? Which is something of a tricky question. Okay, so let's start off with all the obvious ones here. And I'm going to go ahead and change colors to mark it so we can see clearly. These are right angles. We'll start at the top and kind of work our way down, right? That's a right angle. Marking it with a small square. That's a right angle, obviously. And then here. See the right angle there? All right, and then inside this rectangular, it's an open rectangle, but inside this rectangular figure, obviously all four corners are right angles. Or I should be precise and say they appear to be. We're not measuring them, although you are kind of by using your right angle template as a guide. All right. And now here, remember in the last one, the point of the, um, now I know this isn't going to work right off, but I understand. Um, so if I draw this, and now can I rotate it? Do, 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 oh, that's right, do it this way. Let me rotate this and see if it lines up. So I'm using my right angle template is what I'm doing here. I'm creating one. Okay. Now, so I drew a rectangle and rotated it and fitted it and fitted it, fitted it, fitted it, fitted it to that uh, point of the arrow to see if indeed it is a right angle. And what do you say? You agree that that's a right angle? Okay. Looks like one to me. What do you say? All right, let's go with it. Let's say that it is. So switching back in black so we can write how many, we have a question here as well. We did the first thing to mark them with the small square. How many pairs of perpendicular sides does this have? So basically wherever you drew a triangle, that's a uh, perpendicular side, right? Or a pair, sorry, a pair of perpendicular sides. So one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, or we could say four and four, eight plus one is nine. So the figure, let's write a complete sentence. So this figure has nine pairs of perpendicular that's a D, really. Sides. Well, look at that. We just have one more to do. Number six. 
Roll on. Well, true or false, but it's not going to be quite so simple, of course. So true or false, question mark. Shapes that have no right angles also have no perpendicular segments. You say or lines. Draw some figures to help explain your thinking. Well, so given that the very definition of perpendicular lines is that they meet at right angles, if there are no right angles, there are no perpendicular segments. So um, we can start off just by say, stating that. So we want to answer the question, though, which is true or false. True. And I'm going to use the elegant dash here. True. Shapes without right angles have no perpendicular segments, and you can use your own wording here, explain it in your voice and way, but, you know, no right angles means no perpendicular lines, because, let's do that important words, because we want to explain our thinking, because perpendicular lines or segments, I'm going to say lines because we're not being all that precise about that, meet at right angles. Or we could use intersect if you're looking for another way instead of meet. Okay, see, so uh, so let's give an example of, of a of a shape without right angles. So uh, I think a good one to use is a rhombus because a rhombus has four equal sides, remember, like a square, but without the right angles. So this rhombus, and we haven't drawn it yet, we're going to, R-H-O-M-B-U-S, you remember that from third grade, this rhombus has equal sides but no right angles and I could use the weighty therefore but I'll just say so this rhombus says equal sides but right no right angles angles so it has no perpendicular segments. And now here I go. I'm going to attempt to draw a halfway decent rhombus. Okay, so I'm going to go straight across. And then I'm going to skip down and draw a line of approximately equal length that is parallel to that one, but uh, offset some. Good. And if I did that successfully, I should be able to connect the ends of these two segments and end up with a not just decent looking but fine looking rhombus. All right, not bad. This rhombus has equal size but no right angles, so it has no perpendicular segments. Okay, so there we go. Um, what could be another shape that would uh, demonstrate no right angles means no perpendicular segments? Or maybe we could do the other direction and show one that does. Uh, I'd mentioned uh, trapezoids coming in different flavors before, so. Let's do uh, that. Let's draw a trapezoid. We'll draw it first this time. I'm going to leave a little space here and draw my trapezoid for first. Let's draw it with just one right angle. This is an interesting trapezoid. See, so I'm going to draw a right angle and then make this top side parallel to the bottom side, but shorter, and then draw an angled line down there. See, so it's a trapezoid because it has one set of parallel sides there. Oh, see, and I drawn it so nicely and now I'm messing it up. And there. And we have a right angle. See, so this is an example of it having one uh, set of uh, 
per one pair of perpendicular segments. So I'm going to write in the space I left here this trapezoid. has one right angle and so has what? One pair. You see how it works? One pair of perpendicular segments. Usually the trapezoids, you know, our kind of our textbook trapezoid has no right angle, but this one we proved that we can draw it with one right angle. Um, so I think we, we drew some figures that help explain our thinking, that where you have right angles, you have perpendicular segments. Where you do not have right angles, you do not have perpendicular segments. And look what you did. You gone and done it again. You completed another homework time. So I'll see you again next time. This is once again homework time.